All right, today we're going to be taking a look at using a Zener diode as a voltage regulator, all right? And um, so this is what you will see. You'll have some voltage out here. We're going to start with 10 volts, and we're going to regulate that down to 4.7. So we have a, a 4.7 uh, volt Zener that we've chosen. We've chosen the 1N 5230, okay? And that will give us 4.7 volts. And uh, the load that we're going to be uh, having is 148 ohms, okay? And so if we have 4.7 volts and 148 ohms, we can use Ohm's Law. We have about 32 milliamps in our circuit, okay? So that's a few op amps and some other things. Uh, so you can get quite a bit of analog circuitry for about 32 milliamps, right? So it's a, it's a reasonable load to be thinking of a power supply. And so we're going to start out with 10 volts. So we have to drop 10 volts down to 4.7 volts, okay? And that's going to be dropped across here. So if we have 10, 4.7 subtract. So we have um, across the um, resistor, okay, uh, we have 5.3 volts across the resistor, right? Now, um, we're going to have a little bit of current into our uh, Zener diode, and we've already calculated the current through the load, which is 32. If we want the um, Zener diode to regulate well, we found that uh, 20 milliamps is good, and that's on the data sheet. It says 20 milliamps. So we have 20 milliamps going through here, and we have 32 milliamps going through here. So we have two currents that come from a single place. So our total current is 52 milliamps, okay? We have 20 here and 32 here, so we have a total of 52. Well, that 52 milliamps has to go through here. It has to come out of this 10, 10 um, volt input, all right? So we have 52 milliamps. Okay, so we can calculate what size resistor we need. We have 5.3 volts and 52 milliamps. That's 102. Actually, it's 101.9. This is we need 101.9 resistor. Okay, ohms. All right. So do we have 109? Well, I have 100, so we'll go with 100. All right. So let's say that we have 100 ohms. Then we're going to have 53 milliamps. Okay, we'll have uh, one more milliamp than we need. Uh, this is always going to eat 32 milliamps. Where's that, where's that extra one milliamp go? Well, it goes into the Zener diode. And so we'll have 21 milliamps going through the Zener diode. Yeah, that sounds okay. All right. Now, the next thing that we need to worry about is um, how hot are these resistors going to get? How many watts are they going to dis uh, dissipate? Okay. And we know that power equals voltage times current, okay? So over here, how much do we have? Uh, well, we have uh, 4.7 volts. Uh, put this on camera, I guess, move out a bit. 4.7 volts, and we have um, 32 milliamps. So we better have 150 milliwatts over here. 150 milliwatts, okay? And how much power do we have in the um, Zener diode? Well, we have 4.7 and we have 21. Oops, I just pushed the wrong button. We have 4.7 and we have 0.021. Oops, I needed to uh, multiply those two, 4.7. 0.021. There we go. We have uh, power over here is 99 milliwatts. Okay, so 99 milliwatts. And how many milliwatts is our Zener diode good for? 500 milliwatts. So we're okay there. We're below its maximum here. Um, 150 milliwatts. A uh, quarter watt resistor is point is point is 250 milliwatts. So even a quarter watt resistor here is 
uh, would be okay in our circuit, but I have a half watt resistor just because I have one. Okay, and then let's calculate uh, let's calculate this over here. How much power do we have in this one? Well, we have 5.3 volts, and we have 52 milliamps going through that. Okay, so we have uh, power here equals 276 milliwatts. Okay, 260, 276 milliwatts. Well, that's bigger than a quarter watt. Okay, so we have to make sure that we do not put a quarter watt resistor here. We need at least a half watt resistor here. Now that's where a lot of people get into trouble uh, designing these uh, Zener diode power supplies. They don't have a large enough uh, wattage resistor or they don't have a large enough wattage Zener diode. Um, the Zener diodes come in like one watt, two watt versions. Uh, a lot of times you have uh, a quite a bit of power in here. So let's imagine just for a second that we turn off our circuit, but the power supply is still going. So we have no load at all. Well, that means that we have 52 milliamps going through the Zener diode now. Okay, is that okay? So we should calculate that, all right? So we have 4.7 and we have now 52. Oops, I pushed the wrong button again. <laughs> You'd think I know how to calculate. All right. 4.7 and how many amps do we have? We have 0.052 times, okay? We have a, a quarter of a watt. So we have a quarter of a watt going through the Zener diode all by itself. We're still okay because it's good for half a watt, but we're using up half of its capability. But you need to check that. You need to check how hot does it get, um, how many watts is it dissipating in normal situation. My power supply is one, my DVM just turned off. Uh, or if you uh, have this off, uh, how much watts are dissipated here. And again, like I said, that's going to be um, where most people get in trouble with these things. They don't have enough wattage on the um, resistor here or wattage on the Zener diode. A friend of mine was repairing an old pinball machine and he was showing me the circuit and he says, uh, you know, it went bad, and I says, oh, and I looked, and I, I saw the, I saw the, di he didn't know it was a Zener diode, but when he drew the schematic for me, he just drew a diode here, and I looked at it, and I went, oh, it looks like a Zener diode to me, and I says, check this, uh, check this resistor, and if sure enough, this resistor was bad, it had blown up, and uh, it's because it didn't have enough wattage um, in the, uh, in the design, all right? Or another thing that can happen is um, if you have a failure out here, let's say that suddenly you have a short out here. Well, now you have 10 volts, okay, uh, popping through here without this, right? And so now um, the Zener diode is not going to help. <laughs> You're going to have zero volts on this side and 10 volts on this side. So you're going to have a full 10 volts across, across this 52, okay? So you have 10 volts and now you have 52 milliamps, okay? And uh, now you have half, uh, you have 0.52 watts, 0.52 watts. So, you know, even with a half watt resistor here, uh, you're running it at absolute maximum and it might only last a while, right? Um, especially if this voltage fluctuates and stuff. Um, anyway, uh, that is how you design a regulated power supply. Let's do one, okay? Here I have all those values right here on the circuit board. All right, so we're gonna take our 10 volts and we are going to bring it into our circuit, all right? And then we will bring a a voltmeter here so we can measure some things. All right. Okay, so first of all, uh, let's see here, turn on our voltmeter. Can we see it on camera? Yes. All right, so let's turn on our this. Let's see if we have uh, 10 volts. Yeah, we have 999. Okay, great. Are we regulating? Yep, 4.67, that's just fine. So everything is now steady state, 6.7 volts. Uh, we have a half watt resistor for the uh, 100 ohms, and we have our load resistor there. And um, 
How much did I say we're dissipating normally? Quarter watt. Yeah, so a quarter watt, you know, a quarter watt will get toasty. Um, I think people underestimate how hot resistors get. So let's go ahead and, uh, since I have one, let's go ahead and put a thermal camera on this thing. All right, let's uh, get us a picture here. Um, yeah, so we have uh, the hottest thing in here is the uh, diode, I mean the uh, resistor, this 100 ohm resistor, because it's passing 52 milliamps. This resistor here is only passing 32 milliamps, and the, uh, the Zener diode is passing 20 milliamps, and so we definitely have, uh, can, you, can you see that? Let me tilt it a little bit here. Uh, we have uh, let me read it off here. We have 50, 50 C. So the 100, the, uh, 100 ohm resistor is getting up to 50 C. All right, I've added a uh, cursor temperature gauge in the middle here so I can put it on the resistor. It's measuring uh, 48 centigrade. The little uh, diode is measuring about 30, 38. And then the uh, load resistor is measuring 35 centigrade. All right, so that's kind of fun. Anyway, we've we've uh, determined that everything is working. All right. Um, let's just for fun say, oops, we lost our load. Okay, our load, our load just came, our load just disappeared, and now our uh, uh, our hundred. Ohm resistor should be getting the same. It's still 48K. Now, why is that the same? Because we still have 4.7 volts. The voltage drop across the uh, load, the 100 ohm uh, input resistor hasn't changed. But all of the current's being dumped into the little uh, Zener diode, okay? And so he should be getting toasty. And yep, that Zener diode is getting up to be 63 centigrade. Yeah, so he's getting toasty without the, uh, but still okay. He's still within spec. Um, all right, um, I could go one step further and that is to analyze ripple, okay? If you have ripple on your power supply, how much ripple rejection will you have in your circuit? And the ripple rejection is a function of that resistance. Remember the data sheet had resistors, resistance values for the Zener diode, and that was the slope. So if you have a wiggle, so ripple is a wiggle in voltage. And if you have a wiggle in voltage, um, it will appear here. And will the voltage ripple here? So um, the amount of voltage here, so if you have a delta, a delta voltage ripple uh, coming in, it will end up to be a delta current going through the resist, through the, uh, through the Zener diode, which will be a delta resistance here will be a delta voltage also uh, on the node here because of the resistance, okay? So if it is a low ohm, like the 20 ohm, 19, 19 ohms was, was the resistance of this at uh, 20 milliamps, then it won't wiggle it much at all. You'll have a nice, a nice uh, hard, you can, you can imagine this is a voltage divider and you're gonna have uh, uh, 20 ohms here as the wiggle. And if you had only a little bit of current, the quarter milliamp had 1900 ohms here. Well, 1900 ohms will allow that ripple to continue. So you can do a ripple analysis. Uh, I don't think many people do. Um, and uh, if you're using a Zener diode <laughs> for a voltage regulator and you're worried about ripple, yeah, don't use a Zener diode. Go, go ahead and use a three terminal regulator. Um, but I wanted to do this series on Zener diodes because um, sometimes they're the cheap way to go. Maybe you don't have a lot of room on the PC board or whatever. Um, or more importantly, if you're working on an old instrument, 
uh, you'll see a lot of zener diodes, like my friend working on a pinball machine. And he just wasn't familiar with zener diode circuits because uh, they're old school, right? So hopefully this has helped.